Hi everybody, today I have some things to say about Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. It's nothing tremendously uh, important, but uh, I just wanted to have a casual conversation about something I do not like about that game. So just hear me out on this one. So I was lucky enough to get a Super Nintendo just after it came out in America and it came with Super Mario World and I sat there and played that game for weeks. I loved it. When I went to capture this gameplay footage for this video, I come to realize that I still love this game. This footage was captured on a RetroTINK 5X. I have not mastered the settings on that device yet, so some of this footage may look crappy. I'm recording in S video. It is just amazing in all the things that it does. I like the music. I like all the different enemies and how cute everything is. The biggest strength of the game is the secrets. There's many worlds that have two exits. On the world map, you can tell when a world has two exits because the dot that represents the world is an orange color instead of a yellow color. Um, years ago, I went through it and found every single exit in the game. You know you've reached 100% completion in regards to the number of exits when the save file says 96 because there's 96 exits in the game and it also adds a star to it meaning you've reached the end. Now I do like Mario 3 a little bit more than Mario World. I just found it more aesthetically pleasing. I don't like how they replaced the raccoon tail with the cape. I think the raccoon tail is more in line with the aesthetics of the Mario universe uh, compared to a cape. That's just a nitpick though. Where did you learn to fly? I also don't really like that stick that you have to touch at the normal exits of these levels. I'd rather have a flag or that little box that was in Mario 3. Super Mario World did a good job with the little information boxes that you hit and it tells you some tips on playing the game. They're short and to the point and they're exactly where they need to be. It's much better than having a very long tutorial at the beginning of the game. They just kind of sprinkle in the knowledge as you get to to know the worlds a lot better. I love the use of color in this game. I love the green lush landscape of Dinosaur Island, which is where this takes place. Another big strength is the control. If you die in this game, it is your fault because it does everything you tell the controller to do exactly. The standard jumping and the grabbing of enemies and kicking things, it just feels perfect. I promise you, I'm getting closer and closer to the point I want to make about this game. Like many other Mario games, you can get a lot of extra lives in the earlier levels, and those will help you deal with the uh, challenges of the later levels. One thing you have to keep in mind when you're getting all these extra lives is that when you save your game, it does not save the extra lives. It just saves whatever worlds you've completed. If you turn the system off and then turn it back on and load your save file, it'll start you at five lives. That kind of sucks. I guess they had a limited space to store the data. Another strength in this game is Yoshi. It is so fun to ride on his back and stick that tongue out and stuff like that. Oh, that was the grossest thing I've ever heard in my life. Let's go. Hidden within this game is something called the Star Road. You have to find some secret exits to get to this road. And once you're on it, you can connect to the different stars on this road. These are basically levels that are more like puzzles. Some of them can be over with very quickly if you figure out the puzzle. This is another strength to the game. You have these extra levels that you can get to if you're good at the game. But then there's another secret world. It's called the Special Zone. And if you can get there, you are very special. You get there by basically defeating the Star Road map. And it's a set of extra difficult levels. They're more difficult than the regular levels in the game. It's a very stark looking screen. And I'm not sure why it has the Famicom logo at the top. Hold on a second. Hey, I'm recording right now. Can I call you back? All right. Same. 
A cool thing about the special zone is that if you just park yourself on the map, after a few minutes, it starts playing classic Mario tunes. But like I said, these levels are extra hard, and if you beat them all, changes are made to the game. That lush green landscape in the overworld becomes brown. And when you go inside the different levels after that transformation, the enemies have changed as well. The piranha plants turn into pumpkin heads for some reason. And the Koopas, the turtles that are walking around, they now are these guys with big heads. If you ever heard of the Cincinnati Reds baseball team, they have a mascot that looks like this. Uh, that's what it reminds me of anyway. Now these new enemies, I don't, I don't know if they have different properties or whether or not they're more difficult or not, but from what I can tell, you will not see another Koopa in the game once you beat the special zone. It also changes the bullet bills into pigeons, which looks like a crow. It's actually a flightless bird. You may recognize what a pigeon is. They were first seen in Doki Doki Panic and Mario 2 flying on carpets. There's also a slight difference in the way the buzzy beetles behave. On the Game Boy Advance version, there's additional changes. The pokies look different, if you know what a pokey is, and the goombas wear sunglasses. It seems to be a fall theme. You have the pumpkin heads, everything is brown in the overworld, so maybe you were walking around for such a long time in the special zone that the seasons changed on this island. So back when I played this game, when it came out, I beat the special zone and I saw all these changes and I thought, oh, that's really cool, but I haven't explored all the game yet. So I wanna go back and start finding more of those secret exits because this transformation is triggered by you beating the special zone. It's not triggered by you finding all 96 exits unless you're playing the Game Boy Advance version. That version has different rules for what sets off this transformation. So back then, I wanted to jump back in and re-explore some of these areas. But the thing is, after you beat the special zone, it alters your save file and you can't go back to the way the game was before. To clarify, when you beat the last special world, it gives you the option to save. The only way to avoid having these changes permanent is to not save when you get that prompt. But most people are going to hit save because it's the same prompt that you get throughout the game. For first time players, they don't know all these things are going to change. So they're naturally inclined to hit save at that prompt and just keep playing the game. After a while, the realization sets in though that they've permanently changed their save file and there's nothing they can do about it. So you're stuck with all those weird enemy transformations and the fall colors on the overworld. I don't really care as much about that part. It's the enemies. They've completely changed this game and now I'm stuck playing with these changes unless I start a new save file all over again. This game does not have a copy and paste function for the save files. Another way to avoid the changes is to not beat the special zone, just beat all the worlds except for the last one, and then just keep the save file as is and don't save after that. Nowadays, it would be unheard of to alter a save file and change the game on you. It's just something I wanted to get off my chest. It bugged me more back then than it does now. And maybe you guys uh, remember that happening to you as a kid or as an adult. If so, share it with me in the comments. I hope you found this video intriguing. There is a video recommendation on the screen in front of you. YouTube is saying that you would be interested in that video. So be sure to click it if it does interest you. Take care, everybody. Where did you learn to fly?